Good morning and welcome to our worship service this morning here at Beautiful Savior Lutheran Church. It is the third Sunday of Easter and I'd like to uh, share with you our welcome this morning. Uh, It says, we would often rather hold our convictions and opinions rather than receive the truth that comes from the facts. That happens in today's gospel text. As some disciples travel to Emmaus, they face a dilemma. Their hopes and dreams had once been built on the Lord Jesus Christ, but all that came crumbling down because of fear and lack of understanding and faith. When a stranger joins them, he reveals himself as the Christ and the fulfillment of the Scriptures. The Word of God still reveals Christ to us. That Spirit-filled Word shows us truth and enables us to believe it. Because of God's Word to us, we can proclaim, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. We continue our order of worship by singing our first hymn, Lord Jesus Christ, Be Present Now, hymn 902. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Alleluia! Christ is risen! He He is is risen risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia! This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. From the rising of the sun to its setting. The name of the Lord is to be praised. Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Sanctify us in your truth. Your word is truth. From the rising of the sun to its setting. The name of the Lord is to be praised. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father, asking Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, I, a poor, poor, miserable sinner, sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them 
and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God to all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Behold how good and pleasant it is when brothers dwell in unity. It is like the precious oil on the head running down on the beard, on the beard of Aaron, running down on the collar of his robes. It is like the dew of Hermon, which falls on the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord has commanded the blessing, life forevermore. Glory be to the Father, and to the the Son, and to to the the Holy Spirit, Spirit, as it was in the the beginning, beginning, is now, now, and will be forever. Amen. Behold, How good and pleasant it is when brothers dwell in unity. We continue now our worship by singing our next hymn, hymn 480, He's Risen, He's Risen. Our first reading comes to us today from the book of Acts, for this the third Sunday of Easter, beginning at the second chapter and the 14th verse. But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them. Let all the house of Israel therefore know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, 
This Jesus whom you said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? And Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of the Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you and for your children, and for all who are far off, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to himself. And with many other words he bore witness, and continued to exhort them, saying, Save yourselves from this crooked generation. So those who received his word were baptized, and there were added that day about 3,000 souls. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading for today comes to us from Peter's first letter, the first chapter, beginning at verse 17. And if you call on him as Father, who judges impartially according to each one's deeds, conduct yourselves with fear throughout the time of your exile, knowing that you were ransomed from the feudal ways inherited from your forefathers, not with perishable things such as silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without blemish or spot. He was foreknown before the foundation of the world, but was made manifest at the, in the last times for the sake of you who through him are believers in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory so that your faith and hope are in God. Having purified your souls by your obedience to the truth for a sincere brotherly love, love one another earnestly from a pure heart, because you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the living and abiding word of God, for all flesh is like grass, and all its glory like the flower of grass. The grass withers and the flower falls, but the word of the Lord remains forever. And this word is the good news that was preached to you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 24th chapter, beginning at verse 13. That very day, two of them were going to a village named Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. And they were talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing together, Jesus himself drew near and went with him. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, What is this conversation that you were holding with each other as you walk? And they stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, named Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know the things that happened there in these days? And he said to them, What things? And they said to him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, a man who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word, before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and rulers delivered him up to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things happened. Moreover, some women of our company amazed us. They were at the tomb early in the morning. And when they did not find his body, they came back saying that he had even seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the woman had said. But him they did not see. And he said to them, O foolish ones and slow of heart to believe, all that the prophets have spoken. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. So they drew near to the village to which they were going. He acted as if he were going further, but they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is now far spent. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at table with them, he took the bread and blessed and broke it and gave it to them. And their eyes were opened, and they recognized him. And he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Did not our hearts burn within us while he talked to us on the road, while he opened to us the scriptures? And they rose that same hour and returned to Jerusalem. And they found the eleven and those who were with them gathered together, saying, The Lord has risen indeed and has appeared to Simon. Then they told what they had happened on the road and how he was known to them in the breaking of the bread. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We continue now with the responsory. Forever, O Lord, your word is firmly set in the heavens. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where, where your, your glory, glory dwells. dwells. 
Blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Lord, I love, I love the, the habitation, habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. dwells. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and, and the, the place, place where your glory dwells. Please join me in saying the Ten Commandments. You shall, shall have no other gods. gods. You, you shall, shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God. God. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Honor your father and your mother. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or his manservant or his maidservant, his ox or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. We continue now by confessing our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We continue now with a brief children's message. Well, good morning, boys and girls. Just wanted to know and discuss a little bit about maybe one of the worst things that you've ever done. Maybe you've accidentally broken something at your house, or maybe even you've broken something that belongs to someone else. Oops, that's kind of a big deal. Maybe you've hurt someone else, maybe one of your friends while you're playing out near your house, or maybe at the school or something like this. Maybe you've lied to your parents or even taken something or stolen something. And you think, boy, can God forgive me for what I've done? Something really interesting happens in the first reading that we hear from today, from Acts chapter 2. And people in the crowd to whom Peter is preaching participated in crucifying Jesus. Can you imagine that? being there and calling for Christ's death, perhaps even mocking him, being rude to him, saying mean things to Jesus while he hangs on the cross. Can that be forgiven? It's interesting because today as Peter proclaims and preaches to these people, he tells them the truth, that they crucified the Savior, the Lord of glory, God in the flesh. And this news terrifies them. It saddens them. And they say to him, what should we do? What can we do now? And Peter's response is equally amazing. Repent and be baptized, each and every one of you, for the forgiveness of sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Boys and girls, there's a lot of things that we do that really hurt our neighbor and that also defy what God wants us to do. 
But the interesting thing is, is that's why he sent Jesus to forgive our sins and to bring us back in a good, into a perfect relationship with God. God asked that we not continue in those sins and be secure in them. In other words, in other words say, well, I'm, I'm just forgiven. I'm going to keep doing those things over and over and over again. That's not proper. But as we come to God, sorrowful for what we've done, as we hear his word, which convicts us, that means makes us know that we've done something wrong, we realize that we can go to him, ask for forgiveness, and receive that through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Even those who stood there asking for the crucifixion of Jesus, mocking him, calling for his death, received this gracious and wonderful, merciful action on behalf of all mankind to our Lord and Savior Jesus. So we remember, even though we've done bad and shameful things, of course we don't continue to do them. But we can go to God, confess those things, and receive his gracious forgiveness through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. At this time, we will continue our service by singing our hymn of the day, With High Delight, Let Us Unite. That is hymn number 483. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. When we hope for something, many times the particulars for which we hope don't happen in the way that we expect. Or maybe the things for which we hope don't even happen at all. Many of us, for example, hoped that by now we would be meeting together face to face as God's people within this sanctuary. Beautiful Savior originally had planned, then after the coronavirus pandemic broke out, 
that turn from plan to hope to have confirmation today at our second service. Unfortunately, that did not happen. In today's gospel text, a disciple named Cleopas, along with an unnamed disciple, walked on the road to Emmaus, disappointed. It seems that their hopes had not turned out like they had expected. Our text says this, while they, were walk, while they were talking and discussing together, Jesus himself drew near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And Jesus said to them, what is this conversation that you are holding with each other as you walk? And they stood still, looking sad. Cleopas answered Jesus, are you the only visitor to Jerusalem? who does not know the things that have happened there in these days. And Jesus said to them, what things? And he said to him, concerning Jesus of Nazareth, a man who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and rulers delivered him up to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hope that he was the one to redeem Israel. Had hoped. Had hoped. Whatever these disciples hoped redemption for Israel looked like, it seems as if their hope in this moment has now been lost. They're not sure what to make of things currently. They heard strange tales from others about Jesus rising from the dead. And so the the text continues with this testimony from Cleopas. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things happened. Moreover, some women of our company amazed us. They were at the tomb in the early morning, and when they did not find his body, they they came back saying that they had seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but him, that is Jesus, they did not see. In these days of the pandemic, as it continues to drag out, has your hope in God taken a little bit of a a hit? Does God seem far away from you at at this point in your life? Have some of the things that you wanted from God and maybe even prayed for lately, have those things not happened in the way that you expect? Or maybe they haven't happened at all. We can be perplexed as to why God allowed this pandemic to take shape and form the way that it did. And we might be perplexed that how he's allowed that pandemic to negatively affect us and and those around us. As we look to God, yes, we should count on God for every good and gracious gift from our Heavenly Father, for all good things do come from Him. But we often cling to our own ideas, our own hopes about God, over and above what God has revealed about himself. So let me tell you a little bit more about that. As the disciples on the road to Emmaus express their doubts and their specific fears, in other words, it's been three days, there's an empty tomb, those who we know that we talk to haven't seen Jesus directly, those doubts and fears come out. And they say, we had hoped that Jesus was the one to redeem Israel. What does Jesus do in response to this? Jesus points them back to something solid, something unchanging, something eternal. What is it? It's the living and active word of God. Jesus reminds these disciples what Christ himself had preached and taught during his earthly ministry. 
our Lord also directs them to the Scriptures as well. Again, hear what our text says to them after they say, we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. And then all this has happened since. Jesus says to them, O foolish ones and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. But Jesus doesn't stop his proclamation there. As they draw near to a village to which they were going, Jesus acted as if he were going farther. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is now far far spent. So Jesus went in to stay with them. When he was at table with them, he took the bread and blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to them, and their eyes were opened. And they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. This is indeed a strange tale. The church father and church historian Eusebius suggests that Cleopas was actually Christ's uncle, that this was the brother of Joseph, as a relative of Christ, and even more as a disciple of Jesus. Cleopas should have recognized Jesus. Yet on the road to Emmaus, he and the other disciple view him as a stranger, a visitor. Perhaps doubts about Jesus kept them from seeing things clearly. The suffering and crucifixion, as we mentioned, the three days of waiting, had really affected their hope. Even an empty tomb didn't reinvigorate this hope. But things change as they enter into the house, as we heard. Jesus curiously takes the place of of host. He's the host in this house that isn't his own. And he breaks the bread. And then they see Jesus for who he really is and believe before he inexplicably disappears from their sight. They say to each other, did not our hearts burn within us while he talked to us on the road, while he opened to us the scriptures? And they rose that same hour And return to Jerusalem. Christ's word. His faithful proclamation of God's word. Restores hope and faith. Again in these disciples. So much so that they go to tell others. Joyfully. Who in turn tell them. That everything that they've heard about the resurrection of Christ. Is true. Perhaps in these last days, in these latter days, these last several weeks, you've been kept from recognizing Jesus as well. With all the uncertainty that we face, maybe we just can't see God clearly. It's clear, however, that when we expect to find God through the broken lens of human understanding, broken expectations and fallen expectations, and demands, they do prevent us from seeing the true God. How then can we come back from the current situation, we might say? There's so many things, so many things I look to, and it feels like God has abandoned me. The scriptures do promise and demonstrate that God shows his love for us in this, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Time and again, Jesus tells these disciples on the road to Emmaus the most important thing in terms of what God is doing, how he will do it, and why. In Luke 9.22, Jesus says to his disciples, the Son of Man must suffer many things, And be rejected by the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. And verse 44 of the same chapter, our Lord proclaims, let these words sink into your ears. The Son of Man is about to be delivered into the hands of men. In Luke 17, 25, Jesus again says, the Christ must suffer many things 
and be rejected by this generation. And in 18, verse, I'm sorry, chapter 18, verses 31 to 33, Jesus again tells his disciples, see, we are going to Jerusalem. And everything that is written about the Son of Man by the prophets will be accomplished. For he will be delivered over to the Gentiles and will be mocked and shamefully treated and spit upon. And after flogging him, they will kill him. And on the third day, he will rise. It becomes clear that even disciples, Jesus' closest disciples, must be reminded time and again why Jesus came, what was going to happen to him, and what it would mean. The scriptures point to Jesus as the accomplishment, the fulfillment of God's salvation and promise that was expressed through his suffering, death, and resurrection. The word of God points to God demonstrating his love for us and his glory in this way. Yet do we see it in these days? Or is it lost to us? Jesus proclaims the same as he appears alive to his disciples later in Luke chapter 24. And he said to, him, said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. And you are witnesses of these things. Yes, in times like these, it may seem like God is far away from us, that he's off in the distance. But today's text assures us that God remains close and continues to give us hope through the power of his word and sacraments. He actually works through these means and is present among his people and church to give them hope and assurance in our text for today jesus works through the word proclaims the scriptures and once he begins to serve as host things change as we mentioned through these means jesus opens eyes he gives solace and comfort to troubled hearts and minds his disciples believe his disciples hope. His disciples proclaim. I don't know if you notice this nuance in the text, but did you notice that as the disciples on the road to Emmaus ask Jesus to stay with them, they eventually don't dwell on the fact that Jesus isn't there visibly anymore. They don't dwell on that fact. Their bold confession comes right after Jesus disappears from their sight. Did not our hearts burn within us while he talked to us on the road, while he opened to us the scriptures? In other words, they're saying, we understand now. We get it. We know God has kept his promises. We know Jesus has risen from the dead. Alleluia, he is risen. As we seek for God to remain with us these days, and plead for Jesus to say with us, know that he has and that he is. Brothers and sisters in Christ, members of Beautiful Savior specifically, I wanted to let you know that we will, at some point in the future, return to this sanctuary, unless Christ should come again in that time. We will certainly celebrate Confirmation Sunday and celebrate with our confirmands and their families. But even before this happens, the church still is proclaiming God's word. We're baptizing in his name. We're still celebrating the supper that he instituted, that Jesus himself instituted, giving his body and blood, shed for the forgiveness of sins. Through these means, Jesus is with us. He remains with his people. He stays with us. And he does not leave us. Jesus remains forgiving and proclaiming hope. Jesus remains opening eyes to confirm those who have come to saving faith and to convert those who are not yet 
his own. And yes, Jesus still uses the same means that he did on that road to Emmaus. His word, the breaking of the bread, and his supper are so valuable because they grant us faith. And we in faith then celebrate that God has indeed redeemed his people. We don't say we had hope. We say we continue to hope. We continue to know that Jesus has rescued us and redeemed us from sin and death. No questions about it. Amen. And may the peace of God, which transcends and surpasses all human understanding, guard your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus our Lord. We continue our worship by singing the offertory, hymn 781. We give thee but thine own, verses 1, 2, and 5. Let us pray. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the gift of divine peace and of pardon with all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the holy Christian church, here and scattered throughout the world, and for the proclamation of the gospel and the calling of all to faith, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this nation, for our cities and communities, and for the common welfare of us all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For seasonable weather and for the fruitfulness of the earth, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who are married, that they may fulfill their vocation to honor, cherish, and love their spouse. For those who are single and desire to be married, that God would provide companionship according to his good and gracious will. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who labor, for those whose work is difficult or dangerous, and for all who travel, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all those in need, for the hungry and homeless, for the widowed and orphaned, and for all those in prison, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those in distress of mind, body, or soul, for the sick and the dying, and all those who have requested our, prayer, our prayers, including Lynn Strage, Craig and Susan Kepi, Pat Romsdahl, Don McCabe, Lynn Ring, Monterey Morse, Greg Idy, Teresa Driscoll, Heather Mum, Betty Gerald, Jean Enright, Stacy Lorth, Claudia Schrader, Tracy Tripke. Also, Randy and Shelley, Ray, Mary, and Carmine, Becky and Dennis, Emily and other missionaries from Wisconsin, Ken Kaler, Marilyn and Judy, Lisa, Annie, and Harold, Victoria and Shirley, Irene and Pastor Al Eppen, Deanna and Grant German, Rako, Renee, and Carter, Julie and Peg, Chelsea and Oliver, Maverick, Darlene, and Tom, Dennis, Denise, and Pam. Lloyd and Skip, 
Renee, Sloan, and Pam, Randy, Michelle, Braden, Cameron, and Amy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Finally, for these and for all our needs of body and soul, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. Lord, have, have mercy. mercy. Amen. O God, through the humiliation of your Son, you raised up the fallen world. Grant to your faithful people whom you rescued from the peril of everlasting death perpetual gladness and eternal joys. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We continue with Luther's morning prayer. I thank, thank you, you, my, my Heavenly, Heavenly Father, Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you, you have kept, kept me this night from, from all harm and, and danger. danger. And I pray that you would keep, keep me this day also from sin and every evil. evil that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you. Amen. Alleluia! Christ is risen! He is, he is risen indeed. Alleluia. We now continue our worship by singing our final hymn of the day, Lord, keep us steadfast in your word, hymn 655. Just a couple of announcements for today. Uh, don't forget that 9.30 this morning is Pastor Chris's uh, adult Bible study that covers the same story that the kids are going to learn in Sunday school. Um, and since we don't have Sunday school here, uh, you parents are, are teaching that to your kids. Uh, so if you'd like some instruction and some help with the story, um, Pastor Chris is going to give some good insights for that. Uh, also, um, coming up on May 4th, yes, Mike Schlickman, go ahead and say it. May the 4th be with you. I know that you were going to do that. Uh, we're having a special voters meeting uh, that day at 7 o'clock. It's going to be on Zoom. Uh, so you can look for that information coming to you in, the, in your email as well uh, for the link for that. And also this Wednesday at 7, 7.30, uh, LYF will be meeting on Zoom, and I'll be sending that link out as well. Uh, we're going to have a Bible study as well as a scavenger hunt. So look forward to those things coming up. Uh, the Lord's blessings to you this week. Uh, feel free to come by the church office or call and schedule for uh, you to receive Holy Communion. God be with you this week.